a very warm good morning to everyone taking part in the fourth day of seven day faculty development program sdp i am mahima kumari it is my great pleasure and honor to host this seven day international faculty development program and i would like to thank our principal for giving me this opportunity honorable chief patron mr manish kumar tapsi me chairman gizi college of education honorable patron mr avinash kumar seth secretary gizi college of education honorable patron dr sanjeeva kumari deputy director gizi college of education honorable speaker professor g vishwanath pa honorable convener professor dr b c swain principal gizi college of education i on behalf of gizi college of education welcome the teacher educators principal teachers and participants from all over the globe in this 7 day international faculty development program on teaching pedagogy recent trends in teaching learning process gizi college of education was founded in 2009 with the visionary and his wise guidance of honorable mr avinash kumar seth and the honorable mr manish kumar tapsi me to provide quality teacher education the college was recently accredited by the nac under the supervision of honorable deputy director dr sanjeeva kumari and collaborated with many esteemed organizations it's time to invite the most humble the convener principal honorable principal mr b c swain sir please come over here namaskar sir good morning to all those participating in this international faculty development program esteemed chief patron mr manish kumar kachine chairman vigil college of education esteemed patron shri avinash kumar seth secretary vigil college of education esteemed patron dr sanjita kumari deputy director Vigil College of Education, esteemed Professor G. Vishwanathapa, and I welcome all participants from India and abroad on behalf of the organizing organizing committee of this international faculty development program on teaching pedagogy, recent trend in teaching learning process. Vigil College of Education is an institute of repute. established under the visionary and the prolific guidance of mr avinash kumar set and mr manish kumar yachini which has been imparting quality teacher education since 2009 we are fortunate enough to have an honorable professor g vishwanath thapa professor and head department of extension education regional institute of education mysore national council of educational research and training he worked as a director of the state institute of educational management and training amaravati the government of andhra pradesh and principal of the regional institute of education ajmer professor vishwanath thapa worked on 10 research project funded by mhrd ncert and edcil etc etc he is the associated with the nct for preparing the curriculum of four year integrated teacher education program it ep as a nominee of ncert nat bangalore to finalize the revised online manual for assessment and accreditation of teacher education institute published in november 2019 member task force on the implementation of nit 2020 and the designing of the multidisciplinary course at the national sanskriti university tirupati member school board central university of punjab bhatinda and central university of tamil nadu 
member focus group for the national position paper on the teacher education for the national curriculum framework 2023 based on NEP 2020 and member 15th central review mission of ministry of health and family welfare government of india we feel a privilege to have him in our midst for his international faculty development program thank you thank you so much sir your gracious presence namaskar sir thank you principal sir now it's time for brief significance of faculty development program faculty development program fdp aims at equipping teachers with skills and knowledge that are essential for inculcating professional values in students and guiding and monitoring their progress towards professional career it aims to focus on different modes of approaches in order to meet the professional challenges of life in order to become not merely a trained professional but also a better citizen fdp has the capacity enhancement and continuous knowledge upgradation training program for people working in different capacities and roles this program will research teaching and ad administration competence for holistic development of teachers the grizzly college of education always takes initiatives and enhances the abilities of faculty faculty development should be at the heart of any higher education institution in order to foster foster a productive culture now it's time to invite the one the one who is worked as director of the state institute of educational management and training amravati the government of andhra pradesh and the principal of regional institute of education ajmer he also worked on 10 research projects funded by mhrd ncert educational cil etc we are fortunate enough to have honorable professor g vishwanath thapa please sir it's all over to you thank you sir bro really it is a, a great opportunity given to me by <coughs> uh, professor swai i am really grateful to the principal of for this uh, uh, grizzby college of education in jharkhand and you know the <coughs> i don't know some how we have got connected when he asked me uh, to say something about this you know, teacher education so i immediately accepted uh, really i am grateful to the management uh, this you know the manish ji uh, this you know the avinash madam uh, sanjita for considering this you know the uh, me for this professional development program uh, this you know the professional development program as yes, this you know the mahima told that it is a essentially required for continuous updating our uh, knowledge and you know the my this you know the topic which is given to me about this you know the teacher education and teacher education whatever this you know changes we bring that will bring even in this you know the school education whatever you bring that will have implications on the teacher education whatever the change you bring in uh, teacher education that will have implications on the school education so the school education and the teacher education are highly correlated highly related one is uh, totally depending on the other any change any change of anything you want to bring <coughs> so it will have implications on the other one so that is why so this uh, uh, teacher education component uh is a making tremendous change all of you know that's you no know, uh, the july 2020 immediately after this you no know, the relaxation of this you no know, the lockdown during the pandemic period government of india announced 
the union cabinet accepted the uh, policy uh, and so the, from then onwards immediately they started implementation so in the implementation for the last one year we know it has uh, uh, reached to some extent and recently probably all of you may be knowing one of the outcome uh, which came uh, of this you know, the ncrt released the document in the month of uh, this was october that's a national curriculum framework for school education at the foundation level earlier this you know the school education structure all of you know the 10 years of schooling which is having this you know the uh, four years of primary three years of uh, higher primary or upper primary and the two years of secondary and two years of senior secondary that is how this 12 years is uh, distributed earlier now this you know, as per the nep 2020 again it is uh, redistributed and you know the preschool education but preschool co concept is there earlier also maybe in, uh, in the form of some places some states it is a part of the <coughs> concern uh, this you know the ministry of women and child welfare which they in some states they call, call it as a integrated child development society and then the most of the popularly they call it as a Anganwadi centers so these Anganwadi centers uh, the major focus in the Anganwadi centers only about the health and care only but they don't have any school related things but you know the DPEP when program started in some states they have brought this you know the preschool as a part of the uh, this one is the school education but it is not uh, uh, at the national level it's only some states on a project basis and some places it is an experimental basis preschools started by the uh, government and uh, on experimental basis various places but you know the, when uh, this you know, the policy accepted policy uh, brought this you know, the preschool education as a part of this you know, the regular uh, school education that is how the 12 years is stretched to 15 years and these 15 years uh, we know that it is again divided into the four different levels of school education we call it as you know the foundation level which includes the three years of pre-primary out of three years one year is uh, we call it as lkg or ukg in some places our first year of <coughs> pre-primary and second year of pre-primary after that some balvatica it is a kind of a you know, preparatory program and then first standard second standard so these five years together we call it as a foundation stage so focusing the foundation stage only on uh, literacy and the numeracy earlier we had a pre-literacy pre-numeracy and uh, uh, these are the things uh, so we used to have but you know now it is a became this you know the formal system of education and similarly this you know the another uh, change in the structure of the school education uh, which is uh, uh, brought the uh, nep 2020 is this you know the uh, preparatory level that is you know class three to five three four five all the, the another three years after uh, foundation level we call it as a, a preparatory level after this you know the uh, preparatory another three years that is six seven eight we call it as a middle school and you know this middle school <coughs> after the middle school then it is a, a secondary level which is a class 9 10 11 and 12 and you know this all these stages suggested some kind of you know changes and uh, this you know the the all of we know that is the major uh, thrust of this one of the policy is a multi uh, send what is the multidisciplinary approach so from the secondary level now let us let me start you know the because of the change in this you know the school education it has a, a tremendous implications on the teacher education and in the teacher education just uh, in my presentation just i would like to share with you and uh, what are this you know the different milestones of the teacher education then i will come back to the what are the major uh, implications uh, because of this you know, nep 2020 what, what are the major challenges that we are going to face so these things i will discuss with you now let me share this you know the, my presentation here Yeah, you will be able to see yes sir yeah right you know this is the topic is uh, given to me by professor swine to discuss with you uh, maybe as a some some time 
and you know just i have whatever i told earlier this quality of education depend upon the quality of teachers and the quality of the teachers depend on the quality of the teacher education we are all you know, <coughs> that all the time quality of the you know the uh, teachers is depending upon the quality of the teacher education but if you can just read this you know the uh, national curriculum framework national sorry for nep draft document which is released in 2019 it has emphasized on some kind of you know the irregularity some kind of you know the uh, unethical practices that we can notice in the teacher education so that is why the teacher education uh, need to bring some kind of any uh, changes that's, that is why it has a different milestones that i would like to recall then i will move to the actual topic the teacher education is the process of equipping the prospective teachers with the knowledge attitude behavior and skills essentially required to perform the classroom tasks effectively that is the main so they whenever we focus on the teacher education so this uh, this you know the focus is on the preparing the the future teachers so the uh, future teacher teachers uh, we have to prepare that is a major responsibility if you can see the history of the teacher education in india during the post independent period so just uh, i just would like to say it is a <clears throat> prior to uh, this you know the national policy on education 1986 is one kind of you know the uh, uh, background that is the teacher education and after this you know the 86 policy and you know the after that justice verma commission and you know this justice verma commission has tremendous implications on the teacher education and you know after that after the justice verma now nep 2020 what are the implications are there so now just to briefly uh, review all of you know that you know the national policy on education 1986 that was the previous policy now we are following this you know, national education policy 2020 <coughs> which started implementation from july to 2020 so this you know the just prior to that university education commission also emphasized on this you know there is a need to have this you know, regulate the educational requirements of the teachers and the establishment of you know ncert is another milestone uh, during this you know, post independent period and ncert you know uh, established the regional institutes we call it as now earlier they used to call it the regional colleges of education and you know they started working on this you know the innovative teacher education programs that is how this four years program which uh, nep uh, wanted to implement across the country that is the uh, this you was know, the experimental outcome of the regional institutes of education so i know that you know so from 1965 onwards all the regional institutes are offering this four year integrated teacher education program short form we call it as itep so this particular program is uh, uh, implementing from 2000 uh, sorry not 2000 sorry 1965 onwards at that time you know the people a team of the people under the you know the uh, went to the different countries visited the different teacher education programs across the globe and they came out with a particular model that is known as ohio state university model so this ohio state university model is experimented in all the the then regional colleges of education now we call it the regional institutes of education now so it has become our own indian in, uh, uh, our own uh, uh, education uh, teacher education program itep so establishment of nct is another milestone <coughs> uh, which was established in 1974 but nobody knows 1974 every one of us we remember 1996 because you know the before uh, 96 it was a part of ncert in the department of teacher education it is only small academic advisory body it is not having any what is this no the statutory powers so statutory powers are given in 1996 and early 90 number of this no the private teacher education institutions uh, started this no the distance education program and you know the uh, that is uh, one of this no the can say that you know the uh, kind of you know, the entry to Uh, dilute the quality of the teacher education program so chatopadhyay commission came out with a, a very good recommendations in 1985 but unfortunately we could not implement chatopadhyay committee itself suggested in 85 now we are in 2020 that means 35 years back the then commission suggested to go for this you know the uh, uh, the four years uh, this is you know, a ba bed or bsc bed program 
and I suggested preferably a five-year course leading to the graduation and the training. So this is after the uh, plus two level, senior secondary level. Now each state may start at least one four-year integrated college of education during the seventh uh, five-year plan. So that was another suggestion given by this, you know, the Chattopadhyay committee. The duration of the one-year course should be extended by two summer months ensuring an academic session of 220 days with longer working hours. That is a, one of the suggestions given by this new Chattopadhyay Commission. To develop the four-year integrated program after class 10, with uh, a, a built-in provision for upward mobility for preparing this new elementary school teachers. That is another recommendation came uh, given by this new Chattopadhyay Committee. While selecting the teachers for training, the following factors may be considered. One is you know, the good physic, linguistic ability, communication skills, uh, this is you know, the uh, fair degree of the general mental ability, general awareness. <clears throat> yeah, general awareness and you know the capacity uh, of this, you know, the we can have this, you know, the good outlook and this you know, human relationships. So those things are already uh, recommended. And after this, you know, the NEP uh, uh, National Policy on Education, uh, 1986, NPE 1986, it is also suggested under the separate program affection, you can see strengthening of the teacher education program under this strengthening of teacher education program so many initiatives are came for implementation so the regional colleges of education are upgraded to the regional institute of education based on this you know the policy recommendation only so we know this you know the diets one of the <coughs> teacher education institute in the uh, district as a model resource teacher education institute so to provide continuous support for this you know, the primary teachers, so that is they have created, they have named as a district institute of education training. That is an establishment of the diets. And similarly, in selected so a few uh, districts together, maybe a division or a zone, uh, the different nomenclatures, different places they use, they establish the colleges of teacher education. And IAS in each state, one or two, depending upon the size of the state, so they suggested to uh, uh, what is this? You know, the uh, start this? You know, the Institute of Advanced Study in Education. So, with a more emphasis on in-service uh, training programs as well as the uh, research programs also. So, this is uh, one of the you know, the important uh, uh, stages in this. You know, the uh, post implementation of this. You know, the National Policy on Education 1986. And all of you know at that time now this uh, NEP 2020 when July go Union Government announced. We are most of us. We are familiar by the end of uh, this, you know, 2020 about this, you know, the what are the policy, what is the policy expectations, what are the anticipated changes that are coming in the field of school education, different levels of school education, and you know the different uh, this, you know, the teacher education, what it is going to take up, and all those things uh, we are all familiar. But you know, during the you know, the policy implementation at 86, we don't have the internet. This kind of you know the technology uh, facilities we don't have reached to the maximum number of the people. That is why government of India started a program. That program is known as the PMOS. It's full form is program of mass orientation of school teachers. So our country is a very uh, large country with a lot of diversities, uh, linguistic diversities, cultural diversities, and all those things. So reaching the, uh, from national level to this, you know, the grassroots teacher level, it is very difficult. So to create the awareness in a, a massive training program, it is designed by the government of India, which was implemented. That program is known as the PMOST, Program of Mass Orientation of School Teachers. There is a uh, very uh, mega program which was implemented. And after that, all of you know, based on this, you know, the policy recommendations, to provide the minimum essential facilities for this, you know, the uh, elementary schools, the government of India started a scheme that is known as the OB scheme, Operation Blackboard Scheme. That is another one. And you know, the success of Bihar Education Project and uh, Andhra Pradesh Primary Education Project has given an eye opening to this you know, the national policy to think about district specific uh, programs, projects. So, because of that, uh, this you know, the success of these two experiments, so they have provided an opportunity to introduce this you know, DPEP program, District Primary Education Program, 
so dpp was implemented uh, with the financial support of this you know the world bank <coughs> after that you know for the sustaining that government of india has taken they have continued this program under the name of this you know sarvashiksha abhiyan for elementary level and madhyamik shiksha abhiyan rmsa for the secondary level and you know the putting together these two <coughs> sarvashiksha abhiyan and madhyamik shiksha abhiyan and as well as the teacher education component there was a jrms for the teacher education and separate appraisal meetings for this you know the um, uh, teacher education so all these three put together that is you know ssa rmsa and the teacher education of each state put together so they have submitted all these three things to uh, one unit and they have named this project as a sm the samagra shiksha abhiyan samagra shiksha now samagra shiksha is implementing in all the states and similarly for school education whatever the initiatives started in the school education and this continued same kind of the reforms even in the higher education also so for the providing the continuous support for this the quality improvement of higher education government of india implemented a program rashtriya uchcha shiksha abhiyan that is known as the rusa so that is uh, all this uh, because of this you know, the implementation of this national policy on education 1986 and you know the 86 policy important thing that you know the establishment of this you know the academic staff colleges before this you know, the policy we used to have the summer schools somewhere some in service programs or different namic classes they used to use but you know the structured way for providing the continuous support for this you know, the newly appointed teachers so they started this you know, academic staff colleges these academic staff colleges are now in almost all the states they are as you know the hrdc human resource development centers so nct as a, a statutory body uh, to regulate the teacher education with certain standards and the norm so nct was established in 1986 with a uh, uh, just one minute sir please double ah huh, okay right you know the nct has become a statutory a body and you know it has uh, uh, become a, a mandatory responsibility to the organization to set up certain of the uh, certain standards and the norms even you know nep 2020 also asked nct to prepare the professional standards of this you know the teachers so that is uh, they have already drafted document discussed in various places now it is available in the public domain and you know they started this you know, centrally sponsored scheme of teacher education for providing this you know, the quality of this you know, the teacher education centrally sponsored scheme and you know 90 2006 uh, again government of india uh, made an evaluation of the centrally sponsored scheme how far it is a centrally sponsored scheme being used and what is its implications what is its impact so they uh, studied report is available in this uh, the ministry website so establishment of this you know the inter university centers this 12th five year uh, plan there is a sub document on teacher education prepared by 12th five year plan after 12th five year plan <clears throat> now we have what is this in niti ayog is there in <clears throat> place of five years plans planning commission but 12th five year plan sub document on teacher education given a lot of recommendations for the teacher education one of the very important recommendation is the establishment of the inter university centers for the teacher education by ugc so ugc established in only one place that is at the varanasi in benaras university campus and one more center is supposed to be held uh, set up uh, by ugc for this you know, kakinada which is not taken place but you know the simultaneously this you know, another scheme came government of india launched a, a scheme uh, which is known as the national mission on teachers and teaching so this is a continuous professional for this is you now developing this you know, the teacher competencies this program is initiated in a mission mode so this particular program 2014 december the honorable prime minister uh in what is this you know the inaugurated at varanasi under that particular scheme lot of this you know the faculty development centers uh the um, uh, other uh, this you know the in service training programs so various schemes are given under this pandit madan mohan malaviya national mission on uh, teachers and teaching and they have given the support even to establish this you know the subject uh, teacher networks and other things uh this one uh, under this particular scheme two inter university centers are established under this project this is a purely on project basis under this you know the funding which is the funds of this you know, 
Pandit Madan Mohan Malavia National Vision and Teachers and Teaching. One is in Mysore, in our Institute Regional Institute of Education, Mysore. Another one is at uh, MS University, Vadodara. <coughs> then we pre service teacher education programs. At present, uh, we have a uniform duration uh, for elementary level teacher education. That is a two years, but nomenclatures are different earlier. We had a TTC, TCH, JBT, uh, Diploma in Teacher Education, Diploma in Elementary Education, like that, different nomenclatures. And earlier we had a NCIT offered a B.Ed. Elementary, and is now even now this you know the Delhi University is offering in its constant colleges the B.Ed. four-year uh, integrated program after plus two. These are the programs that are currently at present available for this much the preparing the uh, pre-service teachers at the primary level, secondary level. And you know the 2015 onwards, there is a, a tremendous change that you know the uh, because of this you know, the recommendations of Justice Sharma Commission, and you know the two years program is implemented. So the two years program is not a new program; it was there from the beginning. Just I would like to reiterate here: this you know the <clears throat> the Emotional Integration Committee 1961 suggested the duration of the teacher education course should not be less than two years. The Indian Education Commission 1964-66, which we call it as a Kotari Commission, uh, very popularly we use as a continuously for the reference of anything in this you know, teacher education or school education or any area of uh, education. So we refer this you know, Kotari Commission. That is a very important Indian Education Commission after uh, independence. So this commission also suggested to increase the duration of the pre-service teacher education to two years to do proper justice. So even that commission also felt that the one year is not the sufficient duration. So working group to review the teachers training program under the chairmanship of Kirit Joshi recommended for the two years, two phases. The first phase is one year duration in the institute and the second phase is another one year which can be completed over a maximum period of five years through several summer or other short term courses. This is what uh, uh, this Kirit Joshi, uh, uh, this you know, the committee recommended, working group recommended. So this you know the 1985 National Commission on Teachers that we call it as a Chattopadhyaya Commission. It's an exclusive commission for the teacher education. So it is recommended to revamp the curriculum of teacher education and also suggested to increase the length of one year we had course. The review committee of National Policy and Education, popularly known as the Ramamurthy Committee also suggested for increasing the duration of this, you know, the internship or the school attachment program. Earlier, we used to have a different nomenclatures, black teaching or teaching practice or this kind of names. So the programming of action, <coughs> 1992, has emphasized the need for redesigning the pre-service teacher education curriculum at the second level. So that is also felt that, you know, the, there is a need to revise. The NCTA as an academic advisory body under this, you know, the, uh, within the NCRT, so came out some kind of, you know, prepared some kind of you know, guidelines, national curriculum for teacher education published based on this you know, guidelines of 1986. So the challenges based on the national curriculum framework for school education and integration of the science at the upper primary and this you know, the second level, integrated science. So adoption of this you know, learner-centered approach, focusing on the value inculcation, and it's you know, the continuous uh, comprehensive evaluation. All these things are suggested. Curriculum framework for this, you know, the quality teacher education, 1998, the NCTE published a discussion document uh, in 1996 on teacher education based on the quality parameters. And you know, the NCTE conducted several consultative meetings regarding this, you know, the duration of the program. These consultative workshops are conducted in diff 10 different locations in the country. Varanasi, Patna, Goa, Budagaya, Trivanathapuram, Shilang, Budaipur, Ahmedabad, <coughs> the Senna Chidambaram, the university area with the call it Anamlai Nagar, and Warangal with professional organizations like IATE, CTU, and the university department, SCRTs, teacher education institutions, and the teacher federations. All these things are involved with in, you know, the uh, consultative workshops. So uh, NCT also conducted a study with the teachers and the teacher education to know their perceptions regarding this, increasing the duration of the teacher education program at the second level. 
so these consultative meetings as well as this you know, the studies most of the places it is uh, they felt that the one year duration is not sufficient and you know the regarding this you know, then it came with the decision that they wanted to uh, go for this you know, two year bed program at that time they conducted as uh, principal secretary's meeting <coughs> and you know the uh, meeting itself it is suggested a large number of the states except this you know the gujarat tamil nadu and andhra pradesh at that time it was undivided state only the three states are willing to go for this you know, two year bed program but you now the other states particularly karnataka vehemently opposing then this you know, the committee finally suggested that you know you can do nct they asked nct to do on experimental basis so that is our rai mysore and all rai is plus gujarat vidya peet they started this you know, two year program in 1999 so prior to that you know there was nothing no curriculum nothing is there how do we go for the two years so rai mysore has taken a lead and conducted a, a national level workshop on different models and you know different people presented the different models what are the two years models so one of the model which is uh, accepted and that is implemented in all these four ris as well as the gujarat vidya peet on experimental basis so 1999 to 2007 that was the experiment is implemented two year bed program in experiment so the findings are this some of the uh, two years so there are uh, research studies also you can see here and there comparing the one year program with the two years program comparing one year program with the two years as well as the four years program like you know the at the second level different uh, duration teacher education programs compare and you know the most of the some you know, of the <coughs> research findings also says that you know the long duration teacher education programs is yielding to uh, better professional uh, skills so that is why this you know the uh, i think probably that is the the main thinking you know that uh, the now nc national curriculum framework for teacher education is prepared by ncte based on the national curriculum framework for school education 2005 ncf 2005 and you know the this uh, curriculum framework they have named as a <coughs> national curriculum framework for teacher education towards preparing the professional and human teachers that is a uh, so how can we prepare the most competent professional teachers and uh, human teachers so they should have certain qualities like empathy and other things so this much the which focus on this one inclusive education self development of the teacher multicultural education diverse uh, needs of this with learners and reflective practices these are the main four components are emphasized in this now national curriculum framework for teacher education i think you know this uh, professor arech <coughs> dave has uh, published a document and nct published competency based uh, commitment oriented teacher education so that particular book Uh, he has given for the published for one for this you know the elementary level another for the second level and in both the levels yeah you know the competencies are categorized as is you know the uh, like you know the competencies commitment area some of the performance areas all the three and how do we establish a link between this you know competencies with the commitments and the performance so in other competency areas they have given contextual competencies conceptual competencies content competencies transactional competencies and other related competencies and other competencies similarly commitment areas of commitment is given one is uh, this you know the uh, commitment to the learner commitment to the society commitment to the profession commitment to the excellence commitment to basic values these are five areas of the commitment and you know the five areas of this you know, the performance like in you know, classroom performance school level performance out of school performance parents related performance and community performance so all this you know the interlinking and developing a new curriculum which is they call it as a competency based and commitment oriented uh, teacher education and after that you know the, even after the success of this experiment also somehow we are not able to implement this you know the two years uh, program i think all of you know <coughs> the uh, justice verma commission how it came that you know this maharashtra uh, the sensitivity permitted large number of the colleges uh, particularly the you know the elementary level teacher education institutions and there was a public interest litigation case and the public interest litigation case clashed with the number of uh, teacher education institutions and you know <coughs> at the time this uh, managements they went to the supreme court against the judgment of the bombay high court and in the supreme court has suggested that to 
constitute a high power committee under the chairmanship of this justice verma and that whatever this was recommendations given by justice verma committee with the specific time stipulation for implementation so they have given that is why it has become another milestone very recent milestone in this justice verma commission so justice verma commission recommendations are closely associated with the nep 2020 also so verma commission on teacher education published on 9th september 2000 13 has suggested to introduce the four year integrated teacher education program and the two year uh, teacher education program introduced in the universities and the teacher education institutions from the academic session 2015 16 so that is how this one year period became the two years from the 2015 16 because you know several times in several places some people used to say how the you know the court can uh, decide like there some kind of questions but you know they have done with as proper justification and you know the <coughs> these are the uh, some of the things you know uh, milestones 2012 justice verma commission report came and 2014 nct constituted a committee for reviewing the existing regulatory functions of uh, regulatory functions and 2014 uh, this you know they have used comments and observations on the report of the committee constituted for implementation of the recommendations particularly this recommendation number 2 3 6 9 and 11 of this most justice verma commission and is you know the we know this uh, recommendation number 3 teacher education should be a part of the higher education because you know the most of the drawback people are criticizing from the inception that the teacher education institutions are functioning in isolation <coughs> and is you know the because of this isolation they are not getting this you know, lot of diversified lot of changes and other things so that is why the teacher education should be the part of uh, this you know the higher education so that they can get this you know the linkages with the other disciplines and so that education become a real multidisciplinary so the duration of this teacher education program needs to be enhanced in keeping in view of the recommendations of the education commission 1966 the implications of which is uh, long overdue so because you know that's what uh, it is given in its uh, report page number 95 <coughs> and uh, recommendation number 4 it is desirable <clears throat> that the teacher education should are to be located in multi and interdisciplinary academic environment that's what i previously i told it is in the isolation only one uh, beard program without having any connection with the other teacher education institutions or other see if we can truly see uh, this one the there was one uh, conference long back uh, patna i came from ajmer at that time so there was i don't remember the which college it is you know this uh, one uh, teacher education institution they were conducting a, a kind of you know the seminar in one of these you know the discussions this you know the they felt that the is there any uh, what is this you know the medical college without hospital why this ncte permitted the teacher education institutions without the school all our experiments we have to do in the school and whatever that experiments that you can do in the school only that number of intake has to be allowed and it has to be become a school and become the mandatory a part of this you know the teacher education institutions but you know because you know the requirement of the teachers and the large number of this teachers requirement to fulfill that uh, requirement so they have done earlier that you know they can use this you know, the the uh, schools uh, as a cooperative schools for the practice purpose right you know so that is uh, <coughs> the one of the drawback because of you know isolation they don't get you know so suppose you even now you can see a lot of implications are there the technology and you know use of the technology if you can see recently just a few days back just i have uh, uh, evaluated one thesis and in that thesis uh, they have given this you know the uh, unesco institute of statistics uh, uh, rec- uh, this you know the views the unesco institute of statistics uh, indicated that is this you know the and the the different types of institutions professional institutions and the non professional institutions who are effectively using this you know the uh, ict resources uh, in the teaching learning process but you know that report says that you know the number in the teacher education institutions the use of the technology is not satisfactory i don't exactly remember the, what is the uh, level but you know uh, it is uh, if it is required i have no problem in sharing that with uh, professor uh, Um, so right so this uh, multidisciplinary environment if we can go 
at least you know the maybe a other disciplines there is a kind of you know, the uh, comparison the nature of work is different from others but at least you know how so for example another uh, criticism is that people who are working in a teacher education teachers, even with double postgraduate degree uh, it's not generalizing at least a few of the observations here and there it may be true uh, uh, to some extent uh, but you know the they are good in pedagogy but poor in uh, this you know, the content so that is why the person should have this you know, competency in the content as well as pedagogy that is why if you can go two people together one is content and one other person is pedagogy they get a lot of benefit just i would like to share with uh, my uh, young friends here who are participating in this uh, professional development program that is the you know the i am proud to say that regional institute of education mysore had a practice uh, earlier to adopt this new team teaching approach we know all of you know it was a team teaching so team teaching approach can be used for making as this you know the education as a uh, what is this you know the multidisciplinary so that kind of an uh, opportunity even some of the teachers may be interested to do because of this you know the isolation of this institution and they could not get that is why the justice verma commission recommendation number 4 insisted that you know the it should be located in the multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary academic environment so that they can use so for, suppose one person with a mathematics content another person mathematics pedagogy and in these two people go together <coughs> they you know they they can give this you know the maximum benefit to the uh, students this will have a significant implications for the, uh, redesigning of norms and the standards of the various teacher education courses specified by ncet that is also uh, is one of this you know the part of this this is also have implications for employment and career progression of prospective teachers earlier teachers training means teacher education program is only to prepare the teachers now the concept is changed now so many edutech companies are there e learning companies are there almost like you know the google and uh, microsoft all this you know the leading companies are uh, there having e learning division and this you know the e learning division so there is a a need this some of this you know the people with the teacher education background are working as instructional designers content developers and content writers content editors so these kind of you know the other responsibilities other kind of a jobs also come and because of this you know, e commerce like you know the delivery boys and other you know, employment is created and you know, this swiggy and other things came just for the distribution creating the course similarly even in our teacher education also because of this you know, the implications of the technology we are getting the new jobs so our teach, uh, products are getting the new opportunities so when uh, they wanted to fit into that particular job we have to make them to be this you know the effectively use this you know the technology in designing and creating the e resources and implementation so that is uh, uh, the thing this will have implications for this you know, that's possible only when you have a, in a multidisciplinary environment because the computer teachers will be there the technical people will be there for support now just you see in the beginning we have could not uh, we have lost 10 minutes of the so you know, the prescribed time because of the technical because you know if there some technical people is there they can guide and you know this uh, similarly in the most of the teacher education institutions that is uh, not happening this will also have implications for the employment and the career progression of the prospective teachers so existing teacher education institutions may be encouraged to take up necessary steps towards attaining the <coughs> academic <coughs> uh, this you know, the parity with the new institutions so with this you know, the new institutions we have to uh, this uh, recommendation number 3 this it is taken as it is from justice verma commission report the another uh, recommendation it keeping with the recommendations of indian education commission 86 1966 that every teacher education institute should have a, at least one dedicated school attached to it as a laboratory school which i mentioned earlier where the student teachers get an opportunity to experiment with their own ideas that's their capabilities and the skills to become a, a reflective practitioner so that is uh, not there so all this you know the recommendation number 3 recommendation number 4 exactly implications are there you know the reiterated by nep 2020 also and the recommendation number 11 <coughs> uh, 
this you know, idea of creating the opportunities for the teaching practitioners to teach in teacher education institutions as visiting faculty may be explored. This is another suggestion. In order to now, we have an acute shortage of this, you know, the qualified uh, teachers, not in all the states, in some states, even now. And then the, similarly, teacher educators could be considered as visiting faculty in, in schools. So like, you know, this is another one, so that they can provide the continuous support effectively for this you know, school. So UGC uh, established this, you know, the inter-university uh, center, which I already mentioned, which is not functioning. And, you know, this Varnasi is functioning. We may, Pandit Madan Mohan Malavia, this uh, program is there, right? The two inter-university centers are working. Now let us come to this, you know, the NEP 2020. And what is this NEP 2020? What are the implications? And, you know, these are the <coughs> general issues, uh, level-specific teacher preparation programs, single-subject teacher preparation programs, and in, uh, it has uh, implications on this, you know, the teacher preparation and teacher recruitment. Uh, uh, and you know the teacher education, the multidisciplinary environment. When you want to move this you know, multidisciplinary environment, what kind of the challenges that we uh, can get into that? So multiple entry and, and exit in teacher education program. Currently, it is not implemented in teacher education program. Suppose if they wanted to implement in uh, teacher education programs, what kind of the challenges that we will face? And the credit locking system. So credit locking that's carrying the acquired credits. <coughs> Similarly, national mission for the mentoring and merit-based scholarship for the studying four-year integrated year program. And you know, incentives for the, you know, the teacher education program, jobs, teacher jobs in rural areas, and the strengthening of this, you know, the teacher eligibility test and exploring this, you know, the uh, extending this, you know, the teacher eligibility test to the other levels. Now only uh, up to elementary level only we are doing. So reforms proposed in the NEP 2020 is for the different levels, you know, the early childhood care and education earlier, which uh, is not a part of the school education, is only a kind of you know, the flagship program by the ministry for uh, this you know, providing the essential uh, support for this, you know, the preschool children. That was a program earlier we used to call it as a ECCA, focus more on uh, child care and the health. Now that is also they have brought out of the school education. So because of that, it has a some chain. I told you know, five years of foundation, three years of preparatory, three years of uh, this one in you know, the middle school, another four years of second. And in you know, the school infrastructure, this is you know, the transformation program. I think probably recently you might have seen pre-M3 schools. PM3 schools. So the PM3 schools main is uh, focusing on making as an exemplar uh, uh, model schools. Selected schools, not all the schools, and you know the the main this uh, NEP 2020 is main focusing on this on the holistic development and uh, considering every school is an inclusive, inclusive school and creating the inclusive environment assessment and up, adopting this you know, the multiple means of assessment the curriculum framework for this you know, the pedagogy procedures and is this you know, the keeping in view of the anticipated changes in the curriculum pedagogy so the curriculum framework has to be different so teacher recruitment and teacher education so there is a, a changes in the teacher education as well as teacher recruitment also so role of this in the government and some of the <coughs> highlights in this you know, the NEP 2020 is a multidisciplinary environment as you know this uh, uh, the education should be Bring under this multidisciplinary because you know, every subject, if you can closely observe, uh, one discipline is having a link to the other discipline. Here, I would like to uh, bring the recently we had a, a small interaction as a part of this, you know, the uh, uh, IQS activities that you know, alumni interaction. One of the, our alumni <laughs> currently working as the director, Rajiv Gandhi Center for Biotechnology, Trivandrum. And you know, he was actually basically he studied the BSc ed and MSc ed in RI Mysore, MSc and physics. So he studied BSc, uh, what is the mathematics and physical sciences combination, and an MSc physics he has studied in RI itself. After MSc ed, he went to this Indian Institute of Science to do PhD. He did the PhD and he worked there for some time. From there he moved to 
Jawaharlal Nehru Center for Advanced Scientific Research. From there, he moved to this Shumendram, hitting the one biology initiative. And in the interaction with people are asking, you are basically a physics subject, how you have moved from <coughs> physics to biology. And you can just, just say, I think you know, there are that multidisciplinary approach, if you can see, they, if you can see closely, you can observe, there is a, a link which is one subject which is the other subject. And then, uh, then you, know, you can see in Bangalore, there is an institute, transdisciplinary institute. Transdisciplinary institute. There's a government of India institute. And you know, three different disciplines, how the central link will, will be established. You know, this kind of a possibility when we sit together, that you know, the pedagogy people and the content people together, and you know, different discipline people together, and how we can identify this, you know, the, how can we create this, you know, the um, multidisciplinary environment in the institution that is possible. So that's one of the highlight of this policy is creating the multidisciplinary environment in the, you know, the secondary schools. And multilingualism, our country is a lot of diversity is out there. And so the people should get to the opportunity to meet this, you know, the global opportunities. So they should be exposed to this, you know, the uh, multiple uh, aspects, particularly the people who are in this, you know, the tribal areas. So they speak their own language recently. I visited this, you know, the, uh, some parts of Telangana, border to Maharashtra, <coughs> that is Adilabad uh, district uh, earlier. Now they call it a Sipabad district, it's a separate district. They have uh, state uh, reconstituted uh, um, administrative units. <coughs> so that is you know, this uh, different, uh, that particular place where we went, you know, they, they speak Gondo, which is a tribal language. And you know, when we went there, it's so difficult. They don't know Marathi, they don't know Telugu, because the Maharashtra border only. But this is in a part of Telangana. Telangana is the official language is Telugu, but they don't know Telugu also. They don't know. But you know, they speak their own language. So we have to depend on somebody for that purpose. So, you know, that is the situation even at this uh, uh, village level. And when these, their children come to the school, they also need, that's why government of India already multilingual education is there. So, Shifting slowly from home language to the school language. There are different steps on this. And it is the uh, focus on this the conceptual understanding is the main focus. And the creativity and the critical thinking uh, is a focus. And ethics and the human uh, constitutional values. We have to inculcate the values, ethic, ethical values, and human values. Life skills uh, is important for them to. Uh, become a what is it, the good citizens of the nation. So regular uh, formative assessment need to be done. And you know, the, uh, the summative assessment, formative assessment is given importance. But unfortunately, I just my personal opinion that you know, even CBSE with a good intention introduced this continuous comprehensive evaluation. But you know, when this uh, scheme is introduced, what they did, you know, they have given us some structure, like you know, the FA1, formative assessment one. Formative assessment two, formative assessment three, formative assessment four, and uh, in between uh, this you know, after second uh, formative assessment, there is a summative assessment one, and after fourth again another summative assessment. That means you know, when you give the structure, most of the KVs and other uh, state government schools in this under the formative assessment, it is a totally dependent on the only test. But you know the teacher is given the freedom because you know, to use this, you know the multiple ways of assessing the student. So that is why the formative, not only in this paper of test, they can use other means like you know, giving some task to perform and giving some activity to carry out outside the classroom or within the classroom, like right? they have to. Sometimes it is a uh, <coughs> independent activity or it's a group activity, so those things. So respect for the diversity of the local context and you know, local environment as far as possible we can use and also local uh, culture and local uh, this, uh, this you know the uh, cultures uh, encouraging them so philanthropic participation the private partnership so under csr government of india is suggesting to encourage you know the adaptive you know, the, uh, philanthropic participation and you know autonomy in learning so this uh, policy is highlighting that you know the there is a need to have this you know, the autonomy in learning. Good governance for the schools. There is a governance system. There is a pedagogical leadership is required for this, for the school leaders. 
and empowering this you know, the teachers how do we empower the teachers even after 20 days uh, pre uh, what is in service program as stipulated by ssa and what is the need and how it, how it can be continued so transparency in the process in the process of all these you know, the programs there is a need to bring some kind of you know, transparency so that is uh, transparency in the process and academic content and administrative audit these are the concepts uh, which we are earlier audit in the sense we usually use only the financial terms not only this but the audit concept only to bring this some kind of you know, transparency and academic audit so term some kind of you know, transparency in the academic activities academic audit and administrative audit also in the same way so like you know there are different formats different procedures are there for go for this you know the academic audit and the administrative audit. And public disclosures and resource efficiency, all these are the, some of the, some of the uh, what is the highlights of the NEP 2020. And you know, this NEP 2020 is emphasizing you know, the, this by 2020 universalization of education from this you know, the preschool to this you know, the uh, second level. And it should be aligned with this you know, sustainable development goal. Four. Attaining this was the foundational learning. This was the foundational learning in a mission board they wanted to implement. That's why they have created a national mission on foundation learning. National mission on foundation learning. And then already Nipun Bharat guidelines are there and it is in the circulation. Most of the states are already doing and even it is available in the public domain also. They have given some kind of you know, guidelines for implementation, particularly for the <coughs> promoting the literacy and the numeracy. Uh, bringing back this, you know, the two crores of out of school children in the country to the schools and the teachers to be prepared for reforms by 2023 and inclusive and equitable education by 2030. So, board examination to test core competencies, uh, school standards, and the question standards only for this purpose, uh, this uh, board examinations. <laughs> And the focus is on learning outcomes. Outcome based learning is the philosophy of the NEP 2020. That is why. So, outcome, what is this? Not the outcome that we are having. And you know, the earlier also, it's not a new concept. Earlier also, we used to use for, uh, under this what is it, uh, minimum levels of learning program, which we have implemented after NEP 2020, uh, National Policy and Education 1986. But then, you know, this after that, we started using, uh, what is now learning indicators, learning standards. Like that. Now the focus is on this, you know, the learning outcomes. And based on these outcomes, only I think in 2017, NCRT has conducted a throughout the country one uh, uh, test, you know, that is uh, uh, based on that uh, test scores, it is a census based achievement test. And based on that, so each state is prepared the state report card. And the district also prepared the district report card. And based on that, so you can compare one place with another place, one duration with another duration like that. <clears throat> so competency based education. So because you know, when you are focusing on this, you know, the learning outcomes, outcome based learning and its outcomes can be observed and measured by using some kind of, you know, the uh, uh, measurable way. So that, you know, the, uh, that uh, they call it competency. So competencies are are their competency based education is another highlight and increase of the sports like you know uh, values ICT and performance education etc need to be integrated so development of scientific temper uh, no hard separation between curriculum and co-curricular extracurricular activities all are curricular activities only academic and vocational Uh, this you know, there is no no distinction. There is a distinction. These are the academic streams and these are the vocational streams. They are going parallel. Now you know they want to integrate and they want to have this you know, the together. They wanted to uh, avoid this you know, the hard separation between this you know the academic streams and the vocational stream. <coughs> and science and the humanities also this you know, the science and the humanities also one stream particularly this you know, 11th and 12th. There is a science stream, there is a humanist stream. So that differences also they wanted to minimize. And sports, arts, and academics. 
uh, also encouraged for uh, given now government of india also some schemes are there like particularly fit india and other programs so emphasis on digital literacy coding and computing so multilingual teaching and hiring the teachers i think you know so some of you may be knowing kalinga institute of social sciences pune so that kalinga institute is preparing a multilingual textbooks so for the students tribal students they are doing a lot of their uh, academic improvement now based on this my nep 2020 and it has become a mandatory responsibility of preparing this you know the implementation of nep 2020 so for that purpose they will need to prepare curriculum framework for school education and teacher education together so now one curriculum framework is already done that is foundation level now preparatory middle uh, secondary all the three uh, requires one curriculum framework that is known as a national curriculum framework uh, for classes 1 to 12 that is uh, uh, the expected that 2021 but it's not possible it may take some more time also uh, ncf for teacher education by 2023 so based on this all the recommendations so that to also this new recommendations of uh it needs to be modified so teacher education curriculum also need to be prepared by 2023 now this no adult uh, and uh, continuing education also is in the uh, mind that also need to be included just one minute i'll drink some water and come please one minute So you are not audible and visible too, sir. He is busy with something. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, I am back. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Continue, sir. Yeah, yeah. So now this, you know, the uh, NEP 2020 is uh, emphasizing on uh, this, you know, preparing the curriculum frameworks for this uh, uh, two school education. One is for teacher education. One is for adult and continuing education. These are the expected to come by 2023. And you know this uh, NCTE role also is going to be a change. Now there is a uh, this you know, professional standard setting body under this you know the uh, they wanted to bring under the General Education Council which had to be set up. But you now already NCTE working in that particular direction. They prepared this national professional standards for the teacher with an introduce with an aim of introducing from 2022. So it is a lot of places the. Uh, discussion is also done so the, the they have <coughs> given you know that uh, professional uh, standards according to this you know, npst teachers will be categorized into the four be beginner teachers to this you no know, lead teachers like that like the new standards will establish a, a <coughs> new minimum degree qualification for the teaching a four year integrated degree is a, a mandatory all this you know the stand alone teacher education institutions so should move into this you know, multidisciplinary uh, higher education institute environment by 2020 30 they have given the time up to that and you know now they like, let us see is you know the school education the uh, particular at the uh, foundation level and uh, so what are these uh, things are covering under this uh, this particular slide is showing here and is you know the early childhood education covers this you know the Uh, 3 to 8 years it is for the period of 3 uh, years so ncert will develop already started this prepared this curriculum framework 
this is a old slide it is there but here the focus is on art stories poetry and the uh, song and you know <coughs> and uh, this particular lay uh, stays now this another you know, problem is that you know the what uh, we can do with this you know, existing again what is again what is in some places there are some people are qualified and what to do with this qualified and what is under qualified so those kind of you know, qualified people can be considered for the appointment so again what is uh there are four types of anganwadis are there you know pre primary anganwadi uh, that means is independent only preschool will be their foundation level part part of the preschool part of the foundation level anganwadi which is the primary that is in some places anganwadi is a part of the primary school that is another place the pre primary schools co located so the, the, the anganwadi is co located to nearby primary school right so stand alone uh, preschools in some places they started this you know the for example i would like to tell this you know the crda in amravati area capital region development authority uh, that crda on experimental basis they have done in uh, they have established some 80 preschools and you know these preschools are connected to this you know the local primary schools so that is how this uh, implemented like that you know in some places also even in our all ris also ncrt is doing that experiment and in each demonstration school preschool is a, a separate component so this is the foundational uh, learning the focus is on this you know the foundational literacy and the foundational numeracy and it should be attained by 2025 and you know the all these people should be having this much foundational skills of this you know the uh, reading writing and arithmetic that they have to complete by class 3 and you know the pupil ratio is uh, 1 to 30 national repository of quality resources and ability to read basic text ability to carry out the basic addition and subtraction to get over this you know, learning crisis around five core subjects who are co course five core students sorry every students uh, of class 3 to get over by this you know, the foundation learning whenever they attained the class 3 they should have a complete competency mastery in this you know the foundational literacy and the numeracy skills so for this purpose already government of india set up this you know national mission on foundational literacy and numeracy and they have prepared what is this you know the nipun bharat guidelines for implementation so national book library policy is also going to be the part of this you know the in order to increase some places they have some kind of a program uh, for promoting the reading so for example in andhra pradesh there is a we love reading program so they uh, this program is uh, a state specific program It's similar programs are also maybe there in other places main intention is to encourage this no uh, using this you no know, the school library so three months play based uh, activity school library since there is not a formal library as we have in higher education institutions but you know Uh, in the school there is no uh, uh, library in post but at least you know in secondary schools we have in the basic level lower level there is a foundation preparatory and middle schools we don't have uh, what is this you know, the separate library but one of the teacher is a teacher librarian and he is helping the students to get to this much less literature and uh, using for the reading for encouraging them to read so three months play based school um, is also is suggested national repository diksha has provided unlimited cloud space uh, for creating the digital resources uh, for school education as a teacher education we know that diksha full form is a digital infrastructure for knowledge sharing so that is a diksha platform is uh, unlimited cloud space is provided uh, for the purpose and this is curriculum this uh, already i told this uh, Uh, four different levels: foundation, preparatory, middle, and the high school. And you know, and uh, here uh, in this uh, particularly, now this uh, up to class ten, we have a, a general education. Every uh, uh, student has to study all the subjects. And you know, from eleventh onwards, they have a liberty to opt for the subjects of their choice. But you know, that uh, will come uh, uh, even this, you know, the. Uh, class nine uh, onwards, and you know there is a, a exit facility is created here after tenth, and again they can 
re-enter after some certain gap. And you know, the focus at this, you know, the different levels, you know, because of this, you know, the pedagogy, this you know, change in the school education structure, you can just see some of this you know, pedagogical practices that is going to change in them. So, for example, the foundation, the major focus is on play based activities and activity based learning and the curiosity, ethics, and the personal and the public hygiene. These are the major focus areas in the foundation. Now. And teachers have to be prepared on promoting these aspects. And similarly, preparatory level, this, there, it is a, uh, a school subjects. They are going to subject to his competencies need to be developed. Like you know, they introduce at uh, this particular stage a textbook, but foundation level there is no textbook. But in some states are already having their textbooks, like a, uh, uh, what is this? You know, the uh, foundation one, foundation two, like that in the government of Andhra Pradesh, they published, and they have six uh, levels of uh, schools, uh, types of the schools they have recategorized, like that. Some places it is there, right? You know. <coughs> Play based activities and interactivities and introducing the textbook, subject competencies in reading, writing, speaking, physical education, art and language, and uh, science and mathematics. So, so these are the subjects at this preparatory stage. And from preparatory stage to <coughs> middle stage, <coughs> and this is one of the uh, introducing the subject teachers at the middle stage. And it is uh, most subjects, uh, most likely here, this uh, science, mathematics, arts, uh, social science, and the humanities. And in addition to that, they study one vocational course. That's a vocational skills, three vocational component also is going to be included in the uh, middle uh, school. And in those, so from middle, that means year itself, they get an opportunity to uh, study this, uh, the vocational skills. Earlier, you know, this when multi purpose education scheme was there at the time, after seventh standard, those people who are to go for a vocational stream and uh, attached to polytechnic, there were the schools that schools they are called is a what is this one? The junior technical schools. So, junior technical schools school program is of three years duration, and in that three years, uh, first year is second year and the third year, and all the three years. It is like you know, first year is equal to eighth standard, second year equal to ninth standard, and third year equal to uh, tenth standard. After completion of the all these three, they will be allowed to get admission to the polytechnic in a diploma program from diploma again, degree life. That kind of you know the uh, linkage was there with the higher education. Like you know, here this uh, uh, year opportunity is given after completion of this you know, the fifth stage, that's the sixth standard on our sixth, seventh, eighth. The subject teachers are going to at present most of the places secondary level that is in class nine onwards subject teachers are there but you no know, that is going to be introduced from the uh, this particular stage okay. so one of the some of the implications that is going to be there in addition to this you know the subject teachers preparation is to going to start for this you know, middle level and and uh, this some you know, of the vocational teachers also are going to be appointed at the middle school stage how they are going to be implemented that we have to wait and see. And similarly, a secondary level, and you know, the students will have a choice. That means class ninth itself, they have a choice. The flexibility has brought out here, and the critical thinking focus on the uh, this you know, the in-depth learning and adopting this you know, multidisciplinary approach in high schools. So this uh, and now we can just see from this itself, we can see there's a lot of implications on the teacher education. And you know, another one is the holistic development of the learner is the major focus of this, you know, the curriculum content to be reduced to core essentials. This uh, uh, decreases to make this you know, space for critical thinking, problem solving, and teaching. Learning is to be more interactive, fun and creative, collaborative, exploratory, and experiential. And the holistic uh, discovery based teaching learning approach and the uh, uh, discussion yeah discussion and analysis based teaching learning uh, is to be encouraged for the holistic development purpose now this you know the because of this some kind of you know the pedagogical practices that at least you know the foundation level foundation level only two 
one is the literacy and another one is the numeracy so this one the particularly this one the numeracy making the meaning uh, the mathematics as a more meaningful that you know this uh, gives provide the increase the objects and manipulates like toys and the learning aids and then you can just see in some schools in most of the schools locally available material we use for creating this you know, providing the awareness on this the numbers link the activities to the daily life of the child and you know it should be linked with this you know the daily life activities maybe domestic activities or maybe most of the time children are in the domestic environment with the parents and you know the what are these quantities that they use in this you know, the domestic environment what are these you know, the measurements they use all those things can be linked here and give a sufficient opportunities inside and outside the classroom sufficient opportunities for learners at uh, this inside the classroom as well as the outside the classroom <laughs> and pedagogical practices that are required here at this particular stage is you know the active participation of the child so children are very curious to ask you know just just to observe and you know the this particular stage they are very uh, curious to know the things why it happened how it happened this kind of the questions they normally used to ask encourage the child in uh, a relevant activity so encourage this you know the children to be there in this you know the relevant activity taking the account of this you know the observations of the child and you know the different observations you know, because they usually observe many things i think just i would like to recall here this you know the uh, ncert repository uh, nroer national repository of open education resources you can also see even in youtube also you can see kishan and magic chat chariot that is you know it's a small video 12 minutes video there you can just see the teacher is with a child he was observing and the sky and the how it is you know the himself will prepare a, a small a flying mission type that you know so like uh, so they observe and they do something that is why this children's observation is uh, so we have to take into uh, this you know the taking the account of the uh, observations of the child so problem posing by the teacher so the, the teacher is uh, creating this you know, is problem situation and you know so once you provide the think you know the develop the thinking for example when you wanted to teach uh, uh, this you know the just i am saying here uh, this you know the uh, what is the prime number concept you want to introduce are so the already children are familiar with this you know the what is even number and you are asked uh, given the list of the numbers ask them to categorize as the even numbers and the odd numbers to categorize and you uh, given this you know the 2 3 5 7 11 13 etc these are the different numbers and how these numbers are different from the other numbers now they will try to apply their mind what are these you know, the chain this how uh, it is different from this you know, the other numbers like that you no know, a kind of you know, the problem situation that you can create they can think and they will try to find some kind of you know, the, you know, so teacher may can give some kind of you know, the uh, 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 this one is a clues for them to think and uh, so that's kind of an encouragement that we can do problem solving by the child and there are some approaches also if we can just see which we can adapt at this particular lay uh, stage so visualization is a representation oral written using symbols uh, pictorial form etc so visualization and you know the representation so depending upon this is the nature of this they are making this you know, connections under the reason and you know you develop this you know the reasoning ability logical reasoning and you have to develop some kind of you know, connections and using mathematical communication so this mathematics as a, a language of communication language of numbers so it need to, to be used here these are this you know, some of the pedagogical kind of practices that is involved at this particular stage and you know particularly for this you know the process of observation just see process of exploration process of participation process of communication practical process of logical reasoning process of evaluation judgment process of critical and abstract thinking so this uh, develop this you know the interpretation and the other things so we need to go beyond the classroom go beyond the textbooks and more away from this you no know, rote memory Have a flexible examination pattern, and you know 
this is a, a immediate pedagogical implications. So you can just see even at this, you know, the other levels also. Just one minute, I'm just going back to one of this slide. You just to see at this one of the whatever this uh, changes that is going to be there in this one of the foundation level, and then even in the preparatory level, also there's some of this one of the changes are going to be there. And now it has become a, a mandatory responsibility of this one of the teacher education to prepare for this one of the uh, teacher education program for that particular level, and you know. The another problem is this, you know, the teacher's recruitment and the deployment. So the high respect for the teachers and the high status of the teaching profession must be restored. This is one of the recommendations of the policy to enter into the teaching profession. So to attract this, you know, the competent and efficient people. Large number of merit-based scholarships shall be introduced across the country for studying quality four-year integrated BA program. So that is a to encourage the people and the competent people. So they, it is suggested. It is not only by MEP, even this was the 12th five year plan sub document on teacher education also is indicated that there is a need to attract the competent people to this the teaching. And rural areas, special merit based scholarships will be introduced with an intention to provide local job opportunities to the local students, essentially female students after completion of their year. And then the rural areas also you need to consider. Incentives will be provided <coughs> for teachers to take up the teaching jobs in rural areas, especially in areas that are currently facing this acute shortage of quality teachers. Particularly, you know, particularly some uh, hill areas, tribal areas, some backward areas, and you know the where this you know, there is no much public connectivity in such places. There is a still even now there is a problem. I would like to say one example that you know in some parts of Andhra Pradesh, uh, this in you know, there is a tribal area, and in those places it's very inconvenient. Even now the teachers are facing this much you know, problem, and teachers are not willing to go to that particular place. So incentive for the teachers in rural schools with a provision of the local housing that is another recommendation is given here, and then there is a, a residential quarters for the teacher. And you know, with, uh, you know, the teachers, if they want to say for comfortable accommodation is not available, they say that is why they are traveling from some other place. And so there is a need to create a kind of you know, the comfortable accommodation in the place there where they are working so, so that they can uh, retain in the school. So that will help them to use their efficiency for the longer duration. The harmful practice of excessive teacher transfers will be altered so the students have continuity in their educational environment. This is not continuously transferring all those things. And the transfers will be conducted through an online computerized system that ensures the transparency. That is the most of the states they are doing online uh, uh, computers like you know the what is that you know the counseling system, online counseling system which they are adopting. So the teacher eligibility test will be strengthened to include the better test material both in terms of the content and the pedagogy. Both. So the, the teacher eligibility test will also be extended to cover teachers across all stages, that is from this is the foundation, preparatory, middle, and the secondary stage of the school education. So for the recruitment of this subject teachers, the teacher eligibility test scores in corresponding uh, this you know, corresponding subjects will also be taken into account. Now at present, you know, this is only for this you know, elementary level, it is not there for the other levels. This also came because of the right to education. <clears throat> but you know, these uh, some places you know, they call it as licensing examination, teacher licensing examination. It is a mandatory. So, like that, this also should become a mandatory. And you know, so that this, you know, the professional abilities of the teachers continuously can be assessed and can be updated accordingly, then depending upon the requirements. So the teachers are uh, integral part of this, you know, the school complex. So school complex concept in some states com complexes are there, but they are not functioning effectively. But earlier, you know, this I would like to bring here for the awareness of uh, my uh, young friends here. <laughs> That in this Andhra Pradesh primary education project, which was implemented in the early 90s, 
uh, that time you know they had a, what is this you know the teacher centers earlier they were named as a teacher unions but afterwards so uh, it is giving a different kind of a meaning then they said but now the every block is divided into the four parts so if you uh, block size in andhra pradesh at that time it was very small even now in telangana and andhra pradesh this you know the they call it is a mandal this mandal block name is mandal some place taluk or like that it is there but here is mandal so this mandal size is a small comparatively earlier taluks so this you know the mandal is divided to four quadrants and in each quadrant the one saturday that is you know every month we will get minimum four saturdays one one saturday in one place this you know the teacher centers meetings will be so cluster of the schools eight to 10 schools and that school teachers will come there they discuss only purely academic issues only and sometimes uh, some senior teacher will give demonstration or some teacher who is competent in a specific area so that teacher will also ask to give the demonstration like that in school complex that they used to do that kind of activity now nep wanted to bring this you know the school complex with a light of you know the using this you know the efficiency of the teachers in the area of the jurisdiction of the school complex so, so school complex is 8 to 10 cluster of the schools so this cluster of the schools some of the schools are um, what is this you know the foundation level schools some of the schools are preparatory level schools also so this uh, some some places it is a middle school some places it is a uh, high school also so all this uh, different types are the concern higher uh, level school maybe uh, higher primary school our school uh, this one uh, the uh, uh, middle school is there so the middle school head will become a uh, nodal officer of the school complex so he is having a, this one the opportunity to use the uh, resources of the teachers effectively in the school complex jurisdiction that is it. but it's, uh, there is a lot of opposition by this one you know, the teachers community for this purpose let us see <coughs> how it is going to be implemented teachers for teaching subjects like you know art physical education vocational education languages will be recruited to school complex and uh, their services will be used in now you know particularly for this you know the art integration physical education vocational education so instead of creating a separate it's not possible to create this you know the uh, foundation at the preparatory level so but you know they alternatively it is suggested that they can be appointed to the school complex so this uh, their services can be used in the entire jurisdiction so the school complexes will be encouraged to hire local environment persons or experts as a master instructors in various subjects such as in traditional local arts <coughs> yeah school complex will encourage to hire the local environment persons or the experts as a master instructors in various subjects such as traditional arts vocational crafts entrepreneurship agriculture or any other areas other subjects also this is for the benefit of the uh, students so technology based uh, this you know the comprehensive teacher recruitment planning for existing forecasting exercises will be conducted by each state to assess the expected subject wise teacher vacancies that's uh, i think probably it might have started that particular information i don't know exactly but you know these are some of the some of the things that are uh, anticipated changes coming to this in the area of uh, school education right this is uh, another uh, one is about this you know, the teacher education as i mentioned earlier gradually stand alone teacher education institutions should move into the multidisciplinary higher education institutions like you know multidisciplinary colleges and universities by 2030 so till 2030 they can continue that means now 2022 another 8 years they can continue so uh, minimum degree qualification for teaching will be four year integrated b ed degree that teaches a range of knowledge 
content and pedagogy and uh, includes the strong practicum training in this in, uh, the student teaching at the local schools so exposing them to different type of the schools so two year b ed program will also be offered by the same multidisciplinary institutions so one year program will be introduced uh, as a special program for this you know the those who are having this you know, the post graduate degree or this is you know, the uh, new proposal four year multidisciplinary bachelor's degree so for them only it is uh, and it is a, a specialized program for this you know, preparing the specialized teachers and multidisciplinary higher education institutions offer four year uh, in class uh, integrated b ed program and having the uh, the accreditation of odl may also offer high quality b ed programs in blended or odl mode uh, to students in remote difficult uh, locations and also in service teachers who are aiming for enhancing their qualification so multidisciplinary institutions will offer this you know the four years program and also in addition to that open distance learning programs also so the national curriculum framework uh, for teacher education will be prepared by ncs act 2021 21 is about 22 is also about to complete now because once school education is finalized then only we can go for this you know, the teacher education this time ncert is adopting bottom up approach that means field to so the states are asked to uh, they have given some kind of you know, the guidelines and support to the states for preparing the state specific curriculum framework so it's based on the state curriculum framework this you know, the national curriculum framework they wanted to prepare so that is why this is you know, the bottom to the top approach because of that it is a, a delay so the framework will be de developed based on the discussions with the stakeholders including the state governments relevant we you know this uh, curriculum uh, framework draft curriculum framework and uh, discussed in many 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 platforms with the teachers with civil society and other people who are in this educational uh, structure so national curriculum framework teacher education will revise once in 5 to 10 years this is a strong uh, continuously uh, they are insisting that you know, every 5 years we have to revise the curriculum framework so which is not happening because you know it's taking long time for implementation say for example if you can see this 2005 curriculum framework so uh, now it is implemented now we are started the other exercise uh, after 15 years so <clears throat> so special uh, short duration teacher education programs will also be available at the uh, this is the block level uh, teacher education particularly for this is the brp center teachers who wanted to improve the qualification so the diets at the diets are the school complexes for the teachers and other function races so the eminent local persons who can be hired to teach at sir schools or school complexes as a master instructor uh, for the purpose of promoting the local professions local professions so because locally available you know the for example some places locally whatever this is some uh, village spe uh, specific uh, local professions like you know somebody prepare carpentry is there and uh, this you know the blacksmith is there and some other professions like uh, people who are uh, making the parts they put all those people will be there different kind of people and it's so local the professional skills can be uh, introduced to the children and the knowledge and the skills example local art every place local art is there some places and then you know, the local music agriculture uh, business sports carpentry and other vocational crafts so post b ed uh, certificate courses for the uh, short duration will also be made widely available at multidisciplinary colleges and universities to the teachers who may wish to move into uh, more specialized areas like you know the so they can also apply then the, the stringent action will be taken uh, this is stand alone uh, teacher education institutions running in the country including this you no know, uh, so, so they will close down shut down that is a uh, stringent action this is proposed this you no know, idea of attracting the 
academically strong persons and uh, elevating the status of the teacher uh, excellent idea this can be achieved by providing scholarships and additional scholarships and a four year integrated program and merit scholarships so the instructional environment in teacher education institution needs to be improved for attracting the better people so that is also uh, is need of the our special allowance to work rural areas and tribal areas may be initiated in some states it is there may be called the bad climate in mills or hill climate in some like that so and that should be introduced in all the places the compulsory internship uh, during the four year integrated program in rural areas and tribal areas also may be initiated so these are the nep uh, aspects related to the teacher education now the let us briefly um, uh, discuss about this you know, some of the challenges that we can arise one of the challenges is this you know, the multidisciplinary environment this is uh, one of the challenge so how do we bring this you know, multidisciplinary environment in teacher education institution that is one challenge because you know the uh, teacher education programs uh, are this you know, they are the professional programs and focus more on inculcating the teaching skills so how do we bring this you know, the multidisciplinary so it is a to a some extent I, earlier i mentioned it going two people one content person one is particular person and sitting together and thinking together so may come to some kind of thing the new thinking so which may be a part of this you know, multidisciplinary so linking this one subject with another subject now do we put into the practice this is a real challenge this so and uh, this you know, the multiple entry and multiple exit and when you wanted to adapt to this teacher education institutions that is another big challenge suppose you know the uh, if you after two years you know after acquiring this was some kind of you know, the uh, uh, skills some kind of work uh, this Uh, they have left the course and the first one after first year after second year again after a gap of so, certain period if they come this you know the sustaining the abilities is a question because you no know, whatever they have the professional skills we inculcate state by state for example normally what we do in the teacher education we introduce uh, different skills independent skills like you know the skill of introducing the lesson skill of uh, explaining skill of uh, this you know, the Uh, questioning uh, the questioning is of structuring classroom questions and uh, delivery and distribution of classroom questions and use of the stimulus radiation use of this with reinforcement like that different context we create in the, that particular context in a what is this simulated environment in the practice once they practice in the simulated environment then they go to the real classroom so that uh, kind of a thing will be there but you know the when uh, there is a gap again after 3 4 years if they come back and whatever that required so it may not sustain that is another problem so these are the some of the challenges like you know the uh, choice of the uh, student and you know the school subjects are going to uh, make a now integrated science is there at the school level in most of the states except uh, three states in south india as per my knowledge i have no idea about the other states kerala uh, this one uh, telangana and andhra pradesh there is a separate teacher for the physical sciences in the science itself biological science teacher and you know this uh, in the central it is a integrated only pgt science there is a integrated science only. so this uh, kind of you know the new subjects are going to be there how to create and this you know the how to is uh, uh, no teacher education program is there for this in preparing the vocational teachers no they are prepared for this you know the vocation as a professionals but as a, a teachers of this you know the teaching vocational subjects then that is a, a kind of you know, another problem how do we prepare so these are the some of this you know, the challenges i think probably in the discussion if you can add few more things i have no problem in adding just uh, and just now stopping uh, my discussion here and we can have a small uh, uh, interaction and you know you, you can feel free to ask the questions so thank you very much and uh, now it is uh, open for the discussion yeah, please thank you sir yeah you give thank you sir 
you give such an excellent presentation and easily mentioned about anything to make participants understand accurately and deeply as you mentioned school education four years structure of nep 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 major challenges we face during nep implementation teacher education in india in 1985 1986 1992 now nep 2020 In 1985, you mentioned Chattopadhyay Committee. In 1986, you mentioned prior national policy on education. Again, you mentioned secondary teacher education. In secondary teacher education, you also mentioned establishment of D I E T C T E I A S E. You also mentioned JVC and NCTE regulation 2014. You also mentioned Justice J S Verma Commission on 9 September establishment. And sir, uh, the most important thing you mentioned in, in your PPT is that expected outcomes and targets. And the targets and outcomes are universalization of. Education from CCE attaining foundation learning by 2025. Focus on learning outcomes, multilingual teaching, and hiring. So you gave such a wonderful presentation. Now it's time for question answer session. I would like to hand over my place to my next anchor, Miss Meta Singh. Please come over here. First of all, a very warm good morning to one and all, and also to our chief guest, Professor Ms. Manas Sir. So uh, let's begin the question answer session. Uh, our first question by Assistant Professor Saurabh Kumar Sharma uh, has asked: According to NEP 2020. teacher will be able to teach lesson on mother tongue or regional language up to which grade okay can i answer or i, I want to take one more yes sir you can answer you yeah this you know the teaching at the mother tongue it is policy suggested at least up to this you know the uh the middle level which is up to class 8 is a mother tongue should be the medium of learning that is a but now some states are going for a different kind of classes for example the government of andhra pradesh want compulsory english medium Uh, there is a court put a lot of objection for that. Otherwise, government is very keen on making uh, instead of this, you know, the Telugu as a mother tongue, what is also medium of learning. They want to make what is called the primary level as this, you know, the English as the medium of learning. government as its own way justifying saying that you know they get the global opportunities. But you know, if you can see, a lot of uh, this, you know, the honorable uh, high court. Uh, Andhra Pradesh is given it just saying that you know the real they have prepared a kind of you know the academic report around the 90 pages report is there judgment report clearly indicated that you know the, the need of this you know, the mother tongue is uh, they have given the reference so NEP is also is emphasizing that the uh, the medium of learning mother tongue up to class eight. We don't know, but people where this our country is a multilingual country, particularly people who are in a, a tribal areas, uh, home language is different from the local language. So they will be uh, in a faced manner. They uh, move from they start this home language in teaching. So they move to this you know the uh, local language. So that is kind of what we just get. Okay. Thank you, sir, for your. Uh... Amazing answer. Uh, what are the field of uh, national importance of NEP 2020? Is asked by Neeraj sir. Can you repeat, uh, madam? 
what are the field of national importance of nep 2020 yeah yeah just uh, i have mentioned in the beginning itself in my presentation that uh, this you know nep has given this it is on some pillars of this you know the education and you know the nep just one minute i'll uh, yeah, the NEP 2020 is focused more on this was the encouraging this was the multidisciplinary and multilingualism and this uh, this uh, what is this the inclusive creating the inclusive environment in this so the school and that right from this was the school level to even this was the higher education institution level also that's a creating that kind of environment and uh, yeah introducing this was the opportunity to acquire this was the life skills and some of this was the encouraging this was the life skills and the creative and the critical thinking is a part of that and the holistic development of the, the learner is not in a isolation it is the development of the learner is a major in ep 2020 that is why this one of the assessment also is suggested. 360 degrees feedback assessment is uh, suggested for assessing the learners, not in only one direction or one way. So different multiple ways of assessment you have to do, and you have to give the opportunity uh, for this, you know, the using this, you know, the uh, 360 degrees feedback, different ways of getting the feedback and assessing the child. Thank you, sir, for your answer. Uh, Next question is asked by Poshali Basu that what is the difference between Ramsa and SMSA? RMSA yeah. and SMSA. RMSA and SMSA. Uh, I mentioned the SSA and RMSA. Earlier, these are the our flagship programs for the quality improvement of uh, this was the primary education. We call it as the SSA, Sar Sarva Shiksha Aviyan. And similarly for the secondary level, that is Sarvashi Shabhiyan only for the elementary level, up to class 8. And some, this one is the Madhyamik Shisha Abhiyan for the second level, that is known as the RMSA. Rashtriya Madhyamik Shisha Abhiyan, that is for the quality improvement of the secondary, that is class 9 to 12. And you know, these two are two different flagship programs. And for the administrative convenience, they were added in the Teacher education, SSA, and RMSA, all the three put together and they have given a new nomenclature that is known as the SMSA, Samagra Shiksha Abhiyan. That is because you know, it is like a Samagra is a comprehensive concept and SMSA is a subordinate concept. Like you know, Samagra is a subordinate concept and SSA is a subordinate concept. Okay, ma'am. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. So now last question is asked by uh, Professor Mrs. Mridula Bhagat. What is the priority of research in teacher education? Yes, so many priority areas are there. Uh, ultimately, this, you know, the research in teacher education should help if, to improve the teaching learning process. And you know this particularly in NEP has given the new avenues to think about this. You know the how this experiential learning approach is using and uh, adopted that can be used for teaching of the different school subjects. That is one of the some you know, of the priority because you know, this priority is not uh, uniform because you know this uh, the wide scope is there for uh, conducting this you know the research on this you know the uh, teacher education. Particularly, this is the professional standards that professional standards already it is given when it comes to the implementation. What is this? You know the uh, different four levels of the teachers, how they are functioning, how this you know the uh, this can be assessed, and how they can what are the procedures, standards to be used for the different uh, categories of this you know, the uh, teachers based on the professional standards. So those uh, kind of you know the thinking. And similarly, even for the subject specific also and uh, level specific also standards, we can uh, uh, undertake a research on this professional standards also. There is a, the wide scope is there even for this method, pedagogic leadership also. 
the school governance is one of the priority area because the school governance concept is changing governance is focused more on school complex and school complex sets are having the multiple responsibilities multiple roles and how he or she can perform the multiple roles and how they can support to the quality improvement of this school education how effectively school complex activities can be used for this you know, the how the school complex ultimately you, have, you, have, you can make it as a uh, continuous professional development center very close to the uh, field of the teacher so how to make it so these kind of research areas some are hypothetically i have told but there are many other also which i am uh, not able to add at present thank you madam for your uh, Yes, sir. Your answers are very satisfactory, and thank you for your extraordinary, excellent, informative NEP. You, we all have a. Uh, all I hope all the teacher educators and teachers and participants. I've got enough knowledge about in NEP 2020, and no one will have further doubts. I hope everyone's doubt has been cleared. And thank you, yes. sir, for. Yeah, madam. Actually, any participant wanted to get some more information, some more clarification. So I have no problem. I can share my uh, details are with uh, Swain sir, and you can share with the participants if they want. Let them directly write to. my personal mail so that i can respond to them with uh, my own limited knowledge okay thank you thank you madam thanks uh, to professor swain and uh, particularly the management of uh, this uh, uh, this college for giving me this opportunity to be here with you for uh, nearly one and a half hour thank you very much thank you no? thank you so much sir for joining us and your gracious presence matters a lot thank you sir thank you namaskar thank you